Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and today we've been asked to factor the polynomial below. So factoring polynomials is a big topic, okay? Um, if you were in my regular college algebra class I'd spend you know six weeks on this, we'd learn the different eight different types of factoring, when to use them, we'd have a flow chart, I'd want you to be a factor, factoring master However, in my GED class, with everything we have to cover, I just do often don't have the time to get in factoring. And so what I'll do is I'll teach you a cheat method. <laughs> I know there's just going to be one or two factoring problems on the GED, and they're usually multiple choice. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the multiple choice answers here. And instead of working forwards, factoring, I'm going to do the opposite of factoring. The opposite of factoring is multiplying. Okay, factoring is like... I'm dividing. <laughs> and so the opposite of factoring is multiplying, basically. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply out these four polynomials that I see, or these four expressions that I see below, and see which one of them gives me this. Um, whichever one does is another form of that polynomial, just the factored form. And so you might notice that there's two terms inside this first parenthesis. This, and there's two terms inside this second parenthesis. That means to multiply this out, I'm going to be doing what's known as multiplying binomials. Binomials. Um, some of you guys learned the term FOIL to do this. I don't usually use that term, but that's okay. Basically, the rule is every term in the first parenthesis needs to multiply with every term in the second parenthesis. So I'm going to keep really careful watch. For, I'll take my first term here and multiply it with my first term there. 4y times 4y, well, 4 times 4 is 16, and y times y is y squared. Now I'll pass out the 4y to my negative 5. 4y times negative 5 would give me negative 20y. Now, let's erase these markings. I've done passing out the 4y. It's time for me to pass out the negative 5. Remember, when you're multiplying, this is a minus 5 when you're subtracting, but when you're multiplying, we treat it like a negative 5. So negative 5 times 4y would be negative 20y. And negative 5 times negative 5 would give me positive 25. And remember, um, after uh, multiplying, you should always combine any like terms. You should add or subtract. And in fact, I see some um, addition and subtraction I can do there. Again, if you're not understanding what I'm talking about, the likelihood is that you need to go back and check out the concept of multiplying binomials. But I add together these two like terms in the middle and this is the expression I get. 16y squared minus 40y plus 25. Does that match this expression? It sure doesn't. This sucker is not a factored form of the other expression. And so I'm gonna rule out A. And then I'll start moving a little faster. Okay, A is ruled out. Let's try B. Again, I'll start with my first term and multiply it by every term in the second parentheses. So 4y times 4y is 16y squared. And 4y times positive 5 is positive 20y. Now I'll multiply out the next one. The next term in my parentheses is negative 5. So negative 5 times 4y would be negative 20y. And negative 5 times positive 5 would give me negative 25. Now something really cool happens here. I do have some like term like uh, terms that I can combine. Uh, p positive 20y and negative 20y are opposites, and so they're actually going to zero out. And I end up with 16y squared minus 25. Take a look. Compare that to that. We can see that when I multiplied this out, I got back to there. Therefore, if I were to factor this out, I could get to there. And so this one checks. Now let's just take a look at the other two just to make sure that they are wrong answers indeed. B seems like a good answer, but sometimes you guys make silly mistakes. So do just uh, take the time to check uh, your other two as well. So let's try 4y plus 5 times 4y plus 5. So again, 4y times 4y would be 16y squared. 4y times positive 5 would be positive 20y. Positive 5 times 4y would be positive 20y. And positive 5 times positive 5 is positive 25. And we can see here when we combine our like terms, positive 20 and positive 20, we would get positive 40y. 
Nothing else changes. They just drop down. Does that guy match? No, it sure doesn't. And let's give myself a little space here to check the last option just to make sure. So I ruled out C. I'm going to multiply D again. So 2Y times 8Y would give me 16Y squared. 2 times 8 is 16, and Y times Y is Y squared. Then 2Y times negative 5 would give me negative 10Y. Then a positive 5 times 8Y would give me positive 40Y. And positive 5 times negative 5 would give me negative 25. Again, I'm going to combine like terms in the middle. So I get 16y squared plus 30y minus 25. And you can see that one doesn't match either. I ruled D out. B is the correct answer. Now, for those of you who are mad at me, you realized factoring, even though it takes longer to learn, is actually the easier method here. Well, good for you. Take the time to learn factoring by all means. I think it's a really important skill to learn, especially for college. Um, you should know that this is what we call the difference of squares. That's the type of factoring it is. And that's why I didn't really want to get into factoring, because there's so many different types. Uh, but that's the kind it is if you want to learn the alternate method, the method most teachers teach. All right. If you have any questions about this or any other GED topic, drop it in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it.